reviews. Okay, guys, here's what you've all been waiting for. Me going off on one about how amazing this is and why you should buy it. It's an amazing collection of stories weaved into one big storyline that follows a guy called Sonny Harper, who you will learn to know as Hoop. Soon as somebody uh, speaks to him and he refers and says, call me Hoop, you know they're screwed. So, Skid Row Slugger, definitely one of my favourite ones. Racist Carp. A bit of an asshole, instant dislike, you want to see what happens next. The story takes an unexpected turn when Hopper comes in as a witness. Uh, a little bit country obviously does take my heart as well because, oh my God, who doesn't love revenge of that format? I mean, the, the ending of that story blew my mind because it was like the perfect starting introduction to the collection. Obviously, my heart belongs to Drew's collection as far as that one is concerned. The Slugger will always be my favourite. Jimmy's a fantastically hateable character. Although so is Karen and the Doctor and Amy. Amy's evil. Amy in Scratching Post really blew my mind at how messed up she was. I mean, the fact that she would go to all these lengths to dig up all this horrible incriminating evidence to stick in somebody's place just so that she can basically cop them out to the cops to get her own way this spoiled brat has no limits i swear to god it's one of my like big favorite villains of the series they all interlock beautifully i love that hell has their own updated version of torture in a way that he has his own tech the fact that Hell has updated with the times to keep up with Earth's technology, but gone that little bit more in the sense of luring in these arseholes to get what they want. Little Snaps is a jackass. I absolutely, 100 bit. Oh, the Trap House was incredible. Really love that one. Anyone that abuses animals anyway definitely deserves the worst kind of treatment. But yes, Skid Row Slugger, definitely my favourite. Jimmy's story, the end, the perfect outcome I could have asked for for such an outrageous, like, setup. I mean, all of these guys are dickheads, from Pink, Hell Week. Each one touches on a subject that is in real life kind of subject that's a bit taboo, like uh, corruption, uh, rape. It also touches on uh, people going against their oath like the doctor who fiddles with his patients it's it's guys seriously this is a book you need right now you want women of horror allow me to give you one there we go ruth ann has done an incredible job with this story the introduction to jamie lily and callie is Perfect. Three really nice, humble girls working in a hospital called Mercy, doing everything to look after the patients. Jamie's particular interest in Elizabeth, one of her patients that has no visitors and it seems no family, dies that very night. And little does she know that everything will change after that. The introduction is to lull you into a false sense of security to let you know that oh it's all gonna be oh this isn't this sweet and then bang she hits you really hard with a kidnapping and jamie's kidnapped callie's kidnapped and they're taken to this broken down old house that is beautifully described i mean the description that ruth goes into with the story giving you every piece of detail you could possibly dream of to set this visually in your head, it's incredibly good. Then you have the part where everything changes. You start to feel very differently about the characters when you get their background, especially Callie. I'm not going to lie, a little bit raging still. I love this story. It was so well developed, brilliantly paced. I did not expect the supernatural element that got brought in. I am so glad it's there. When there is violence and abuse, oh, Ruth does not at all skimp 
on any detail. Gore, horror. Oh, this woman is like, this was a dream of a read for me because it had everything I needed from character development, story development, structure, atmosphere. This was perfect. So for me, I think you guys would be bloody insane if you didn't get this one. It's only 40 pages. You're not going to like get bored anytime soon during the read. You are going to want to know more about Jamie Carver. You're going to want to know more about why she's in this situation because I was hella confused why she was in a basement in a house with Callie. But when you hear more about Elizabeth, more about Callie, more about the assailants that have taken them, the twisted monsters that they are, you, my friends, are not going to put this book down. <laughs> Good evening, fellow reviewer friends. It's me again. Finally, got myself a nice patch up. And as you can see, the Godzilla stash is on display today because we are doing a very special review for the very awesome Mr. John Boltzberg, who created The Abhorrent Siren. Now, The Abhorrent Siren is a story that not only touches on real life kind of taboo so like legal drugs that you can buy and um, that you receive in case of an emergency and the also the illegal side where people are trading uh, opioids now imagine that somebody's tampering with these opioids and it starts affecting the wildlife so they're dumping into this lake and all these these little guys look how cute they are now imagine them getting nasty big and wanting to eat your face well that's what john does he, we meet a variety of amazing characters and i have to admit it's so messed up it's so awesomely messed up not only does it make you think twice about like for me because i i take tablets it made me go mm, am i gonna turn into a lizard uh it also was a great monster book so for me, the, the giant axolotl plumbering over the city and then all these tiny human turned axolotl peoples uh, going through the basic primary needs of uh, breeding and eating and fighting for their territory. I love that it's basically like as soon as the human gets hit by this stuff, factory reset go straight into primal mode so you only go for the basic things that you need so to breed to eat and and I, I got sad because that there's this guy that's at the very beginning his, his missus is a bit on the tablets and she can't get off them and it's messed up their marriage and then she starts turning into an axolotl monster thing and yeah um tries to eat her husband and little girl and I'm kind of like all the way through the book, I'm following their story. And then at the very end, John twists it and turns my stomach and heart into a kebab. So honestly, guys, I am looking forward to the next read, which is his next book, which is this one. And you need to get this one because Godzilla says so. Don't you, Godzilla? Oh, Godzilla, endorse John Boltzberg. You heard the chonky monkey. Get it. Get it now.